Um, I just want to say that it's uh, with some wonderful guests we've been having here at the India Global Forum UAE, and we've still got many more great guests to come. Um, we're actually continuing now with our Global Disruptors series, and the title of this next session is Time for Heroes. Why do I say that? Because transforming the global automotive industry, a famous name, Hero Moto Corp. And I want to invite our uh, esteemed guest up on stage, Dr. Pawan Munjal, the chairman and CEO of Hero Moto Corp. Dr. Pawan, fantastic to have you here. Really good to see you. Um, thank you, thank you so much. Greg. A pioneer of the automotive industry. Um, how do you see it changing? Because there, there has to be probably the biggest change in the history of automotive vehicles right now. Is it changing fast enough? Before I get into business, my namaskar to to everyone here in this, in this room and, and all those who are watching us virtually from across the globe. I hope everyone is keeping well, staying safe in these uh, strange times. That's right. Um, absolutely strange times. I also like to thank uh, Manoj here and uh, my friend Aman for inviting me to, to the India Global Forum UAE excellent timing and an excellent forum for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Manjal. Well, coming back uh, to your question, to your point, everything is changing for us. Hmm. It is a, a huge disruption in the global automotive industry. Is it changing fast enough? Is it slow? The fact that it is changing is, is good for me, is good enough for me. Could we have done it earlier? Yes, of course, we could. But that's behind us, that time is behind us. What is required now for all of us is to really hasten up the pace of this change. I know for sure, I'm sure most of my, my compatriots would also agree with me there is no other way. This is the only way forward for all of us. Who is driving the change? Has it got to be the private sector alone? Does it have to be private and government sector? My world today is all about partnerships. The vision that I have, the new vision that I have for my company is be the future of mobility and to get to that vision, the mission is create, collaborate, and inspire. So I do believe that we are in a world today where partnerships and collaborations are the only way forward. No one individual, no one company can do what is required to be done today and for the world tomorrow. It has to be about partnerships. There is so much knowledge residing out there with various firms, with various people. I don't have to reinvent the wheel again. All other people don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can all partner, we can all bring technologies together, pool our resources, and then move forward. What does it mean in real terms for your business and the manufacturing process turning to electric? It means that we have to reinvent ourselves. We've been in this business now for over 30 years, over three decades. A very successful business, a throbbing business. We still continue to make almost 25,000 motorcycles and scooters every day. January this year, we 
produced and sold our 100 millionth motorcycle in a matter of just that many years. Amazing. Having said that, now all of that now has to change. It cannot change overnight. There is a legacy that we build. Now that legacy has to change, but it has to happen gradually. The engine has to take a different turn now. And there is enough and more work going on to make this change happen. And again, we are not going to do it alone. It is the entire ecosystem that works together with us, which has to change. The supply chain, the supply chain has to change. I'm talking of the engine, yeah. The engine is going away. There will be no engine. So all that supply chain has to change. The, the battery has to come in. The battery management system has to come in. The motor has to come in. So where is all this technology coming in from? Where is all this knowledge coming from? Are there engineers out there who have studied this? Are there people who have experience in building all this technology? Not enough. So all of this has to be built. Is there skilled manpower available today to completely transform the industry, change the entire global automotive industry? Not enough. So all that scaling has to be done. A lot of work is required to be done, which is why I say it has to happen with partnerships. And especially partnership between governments and the private sector. Can the skill, a lot of the skill, come directly from India at the moment? A lot of the skill can come from India, but then there are skills available in pockets across the globe. There are some countries who already have a headway. They have already done work on electrification, and there are some who are already on the way so a company like ours, we are pooling all resources. I have, I have 12 nationalities working in my R&D center from 12 different countries. I have a center in Germany where, again, I have 11 different nationalities. So wherever I believe that there is the best skill available, we bring those skills together into our pool. That's how we can produce the best technology, the best quality, and the best performance of a product for our customer. So if you're producing 25,000 motorcycle and scooter per day, what, what is your current market share in India? In India? Hmm. In motorcycles, we are at 50% market. Um, in scooters, the market share is much smaller. So overall, we are about 35% of the Indian market. And has, has the technology really changed in the last 30 years? I mean, apart from electric coming in, you know, as they stand right now, are the motorcycles pretty much as they've always been? Always been? Well, motorcycle has a frame, two wheels, an engine. So in that sense, it is what it was. But the technology has been changing, gradually moving forward. There's a lot of electronics now in the bikes, mm. the exhaust emission norms have been becoming more and more stringent to be able to meet those exhaust emission norms. We have to put in so much stuff into the engine, so much more electronics into the engine. Most of our scooters and motorcycles today are connected. The customer today wants all of that. Mm. So there is a lot of change in technology in that sense. So what about your mission at Hero Moto Corp? What would you say your latest mission is in 2021? Well, there is clearly one mission, and that is to move ahead, move forward, move very fast on electrification. We actually started working on electrification some years back. We 
had already produced a hybrid scooter with a partner in the US. We showed that product at the Delhi Motor Show. Unfortunately, the company went under, so that project got shelved. Having said that, immediately after that, we put in money into a startup in Bangalore, Aether Energy, which is a very successful startup. In October this year, they had 40% of the market share in EVs in India. Um, similarly, we have uh, also partnered with another company out of Taiwan, Gogoro Inc., which is into battery swapping, a very successful battery swapping company. So we are taking parallel routes on charging infrastructure, fast charging as well as uh, battery swapping. So coming back to your question, the mission clearly is to move very, very fast on electrification. Come March 22, we will be launching the first electric product from Hero Motor Car. That's amazing. So can you tell us more about that and, and the extent and reach of it? Well, I actually cannot tell you any, anything more <laughs> than the fact that we are launching yeah. this product in uh, March of 22. That's the real game changer there, right? It is. It is going to be a game changer. Of course, it will be followed by more products uh, right. thereafter. What I am going to be very soon going on releasing teasers for, for you and, and for our customers to look forward to the launch in March. But that is great news for sustainability, the carbon footprint, you name it. It's just good news for, for us as a world um, and mobility. It is, it is wonderful news. Uh, I'm personally very big on uh, sustainability. Mm. Um, all our factories today, I call them garden factories because they are green. The materials we use for building the factories are cradle to cradle green walls inside, we cultivate uh, vegetables on top of the roof of the factories, we return more water to the soil than we consume ourselves. So in that sense, very green factories, sustainable, and I encourage our entire ecosystem to do that, to follow that. We got rid of single-use plastics uh, long before there was any regulation. A point here, important point to note for for you and for everyone is we don't have to wait for regulation to do these things. Some of us have to pioneer these things. As I said, I'm big on sustainability. So green mobility and sustainable mobility is the call for the day. One important point here is that while we are doing all of this, the private sector, the government also has to come in on transportation, mass transportation. We have to have all our buses, our trains, and other mass transportation going electric as well. What do you think will, this will do to your, your valuation, your, your stock market um, price? What, what um, I mean, obviously, new technology and something, an announcement like that is good news, right? Well, if, if what, what has happened yesterday in the US and in Taiwan, um, not sure if you followed that, Two companies, Harley Davidson announced Livewire as a separate company. Gogoro Inc. also gone in for a SPAC and a pipe, and the valuation is doing very well. If that is any indicator, then clearly when we go out there, the valuation has to has to go up. Brilliant. And that's what the investor today is, is looking at. Well, we will leave it there. We've run out of time. Um, fortunately, but Dr. Uh, Pawan Manjal, uh, Chairman and CEO of Hero Moto Corp, really appreciate you being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Thank, you. Thank you so much.